but I found out that's exactly how he wants it. Reliance. He doesn't want us self-sufficient. Well, if you think, well, yeah, he does. Well, why does it say, as many that are led? That don't sound like a very self-sufficient person. Oh, I'm preaching in the Holy Spirit. It's not really self-reliant if you have to be led everywhere you go. We started this last week. For as many that are led by the Spirit, they are also the sons of God. That's why the Bible says you lose your life and you'll find it. Lose what? Lose control. Lose your control. Give control to God. Don't give control to a religious system. Give control. Holy Spirit is here to guide you. He's also called the Spirit of Truth. And He said He will lead you and guide you into all truth. Lead you and guide you into all truth. But if you don't give away control, then he cannot take control. And he will not, by the way. He will not. But he inhabits the yielded life. And he is looking for the yielded life. Because you, there's a way that seems right to me and seems right to you. Because we're taught to be self-sufficient, aren't we? Right? As soon as we're born, we're like taught to walk or taught to crawl, taught to talk, and then taught to shut up, and then... You know, talk, you know, talk, 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 right? Bringing him along. I wonder how long till he says a word. I wonder how long till Grayson says a word. I was praying tonight, and the Lord came to me in his way, and he said, you haven't made any room for me to interrupt you because you're completely in control. I said, what are you talking about, Lord? I'm not, what? Well, I mean, Lord, I've learned some things about your spirit over time. He said, he said, You've learned less than you think you've learned. You think you know it, but you don't know it. Huh? Well, I'm walking in the prayer, I'm walking in the glory. And amen. I there that's reality too. But are we supposed to be able to walk? Absolutely. Only though, as he is in the light. Walk in the light as he is in the light. What does that mean? You hang out where the light is. And if the light isn't running 500 miles this direction, then you're not there. But it goes back to Jamie, now you're being led again. Led. It's not self-reliant. It's led. Like, literally, God, which way do you want me to go? The world teaches us that we need to have it all together, and we need to know exactly what's happening, and we we need to know exactly what's going on here and going on there. And clearly, you've got requirements on your job, you've got requirements in school, and that is a type of wisdom to know what's about to happen. It's, it's okay, right? It's okay to have that. But you can't bring that into your walk with God. Because you bring that wisdom and you become foolish. You accept God's foolish that He's trying to bring in, you into, and you go, what do you mean foolish? It means I can drive from... I've, I've been... From New York to Napa Valley and back again. I know how to get places. I know how to go places. I know how to book hotel fare. I know how to book airfare. I know how to make sure I get my clothes there. I know how to have everything lined up. I know how to go to another city and have 10 meetings and be on time to every single meeting and do what I'm supposed to do. I have the ability to control stuff like that. I have the ability to schedule it and make it happen. But when it comes to God, that goes out the window. When it comes to God, I'm not in the driver's seat. When it comes to God, I'm in the being led seat. And now God's leading me. See, I drive the other thing. And I gotta, that's not the hat God wants you wearing, by the way. If you lead up a family, I understand about having to drive that family. <laughs> drive them to church. Drive them to school. I understand about driving them. Amen? Driving each other crazy. I understand about all that drive. But the Bible says, right? What happened? Did the Spirit 
What did the Spirit do with Jesus into the wilderness? Drive him? Huh? Spirit. Wilderness. Jesus didn't really know what was about to happen in, in, in the fact of this. He was fully God. He's fully man. He was willing to do things as a man. Did you know that? The Bible says he made himself of no reputation. And though he thought it not robbery to be called equal with God, he took up himself upon a form of a servant. He's the only man on the planet that was ever sinless. Amen. And he is a model of what a, the, the power of a sinless life is. Amen. He's a model of what being yielded looks like. Hallelujah. Did you know the scripture talked about Jesus and he didn't say that he was a one-off thing, never, you know, nothing like that. He, the Bible says that he was the firstborn among many brethren. What does that mean? Amen. That means he, he brought something that no one ever brought, right? He was the firstborn. That's what the Bible says. He was the firstborn. But he was the firstborn among many brethren. That means he established a pattern for us to follow. And when you look at the life of Jesus and you look at the miracles and the demonstration and the manifestation and the power and the presence and the glory, that, that stuff is what your life looks like, completely yielded to the Holy Spirit. America is not yielded to the Holy Spirit. You and I, most of the time, are not yielded to the Holy Spirit. How many have ever been yielded to your stomach? Everybody should have raised their hand. Huh? Amen. How many have ever been yielded to your job? It used to be, amen. I bless you, Cal. I bless you, bro. How many years of retired now? How many years have you been retired? He's still working, though. Don't let him fool you. He's still out there scrapping metal and working. I mean, he works harder than most of us anyhow. So the thing is, is when we look at life, there's not a ton of yielding to look at. There's a lot of driving. Driving it, driving it, driving it. But when it comes into the spirit, there's a whole other dimension, which is being yielded. Yielded. Jesus represented the beautiful model of a, a life completely surrendered. Amen. And so the stuff that we read about Jesus doing, it wasn't supposed to be on a flip book to be like, oh, yeah, that was a one-off deal. No one can ever work in that. Because the scripture said he was the firstborn among many brethren. Jesus said stuff like this. Greater works than this shall you do. Why would he say that? That would, just, that? that would just be a mean statement if it wasn't true. Amen? And part of the reason he could say that is because of the same principle. The same principle. Now, what is the same principle? This is the same principle. John 17, 22. Do you have it, David? 17, 22 through 23. Let's see if we got it up here. Ooh, there you go. Well, that was a good one to throw up there. Um, so I don't keep running into this. Did, I, um, did we get those notes in there or no? If we didn't, it's okay. Okay, good. I'm glad you got that one up there. Now you can see where I'm going. John 17, 22. This is Jesus speaking. He said, And the glory which you have given me, I have done what? Say, same. This is the same principle. Jesus didn't receive a great glory and give you a little glory. Amen. I'm trying to help you understand you got the same juice. Amen. Amen. The, he said, hey, the glory which you gave me, Jesus is talking to the Heavenly Father. He's talking to Abba Father. He's saying, the glory which you have given me, I have given them. 
Same. That, the reason why, that they may be one just as we are one. Look at here, guys. We go, well, yeah, well, Jesus is working with a father in a dimension that I've never seen before. Well, that's okay, you've never seen it before, but look what the purpose here of the glory. Same glory he has, he gives to you, Cleo. Why? That we could be one just as they are one. Amen. So now I have a unity with this glory. Amen? Same principle. He didn't give you a lesser glory. Hallelujah. That's the same glory that was given to Jesus of the Father is given to you. Say the same glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 23. I in them and you in me. Why? That they may be made in... Hallelujah. And that the world may know that you have sent me, and look at this, and have what? That's the key, isn't it? That's the key about this love. We put love on all kinds of different scales. This is what you need to understand. He has loved them as you have loved me. Say same. Same glory, same love. Oh, man. That's awesome. Same glory, same love. Same glory, same love. Hallelujah. Same, oh man. Hmm. Look at this, Romans 8, 11. I don't know if we have that or not, but if we do, that'd be awesome. Amen. Romans 8, 11. <clears throat> it says, but if the spirit of him, I'll let you get it on the, the screen. 8, 11. Praise God. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Amen? Hey, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Same glory, same love, same Spirit. He used the same stuff. Amen? Well, no, He had this Spirit. He had this special unction. That's not what the Bible says. He had a special purpose. He had a special name. His blood was special and it served a special purpose. But when it comes to glory, when it comes to the Spirit, when it comes to love, it's the same stuff. Amen. You need to understand the stuff that's been invested in you is the same stuff that Jesus is working with. Hallelujah. Because that takes away my excuse. Amen. It takes away my excuses. Well, that was Jesus. That, he never said that. He never said we should say that. He said, greater works than this will you do. So if that's the case, if I've got the same glory, right? I got the same love. I got the same spirit, right? Uh, and there's another one, which is peace, which he said... Um, he said, uh, my peace I give to you, not as the world give, give I to you. Anybody ever remember that scripture? Jesus said, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, give I to you. Does anybody know that that's in the Bible? Just say amen or raise your hand or something like that. Just say that's so, amen, that is so. So I, now I've got same power, uh, or excuse me, I have, well, same glory, same spirit, same love, same peace. All right? So if I got all the sameness, Amen? What is the source of that stuff? The Spirit, the Holy Spirit. As your life yields to Holy Spirit, the glory grows. As your life yields to the Holy Spirit, power grows. You shall have power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. When you yield to Holy Spirit, your peace grows. Because you see, what we've done in church is we've lived out of principles instead of living out of presence. And we need godly principles. Amen? We need to know that there's only one God. We we need to know that, you know, uh, I shouldn't have an idol in my home. I shouldn't shouldn't have idolatry. Right? I I should know that's good. That's a good principle, right? Amen? Being faithful, that's a powerful principle. Amen? But living out of principles will not bring the same breakthrough as living out of presence. Amen. 
They're the best principle keepers in the world were the Jewish people. Best system there is. And it couldn't get them to recognize who Jesus was as a nation. Didn't, they missed it. Best law system there was. Best principles. Amen. And still missed it. So what, so what we have is this, guys. Same glory, same love, same peace, same spirit. Different amounts of yielding. And you know what? Today we took Grayson to uh, the uh, um, Vail Point Park for the first time. My son Grayson. He's nine months old now. Um, and so we went there, and you know what? Uh, he didn't get there on his own. He went there because that's where the father wanted to go. And the father just picked him up and took him. Amen? The father put him in position. Elena wanted to be a part of what the father was doing. She spent the night off at a friend's house. She calls in the morning and says, hey, I, I'm tired of being over here. I want to be with you guys. Had nothing to do with us getting breakfast, I'm sure. But Elena was like, you know what? I'm over here at my friend, dorky friend's house, and I know what the father's doing. I want to be involved with what the father's doing. Hey, Dad, can you come get me? Some of you in this room need to learn to look up and go, you know what? I'm not doing what the father's doing right now. I'm way out. I've spent the night off in, in some other land, and I need to wake up to, I'm in cuckoo land. I need to wake up to what the father's doing, and I need to get involved. I, I got to make a collect call tonight. Hey, Daddy, I really need you. I have any, I, I, I've heard about what you're doing, but I need to be where you are. I have, can you come get me? Can I get a witness in here? I need you to come get me. Why was Jesus' life so powerful? Because he was yielded to the Father. Amen. He really was. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit hadn't been given like we have it today. Amen. It hadn't been given exactly like we had it today. And the Bible says, Jesus said that he only did what he saw the Father doing. Amen. And so that's important. So, <laughs> so Jesus is powerful, but Jesus isn't doing his own thing. He's following the lead. He's following somebody else's leadership. Jesus' power is found in his being led. Okay, what are you going to do today, Dad? Hey, Father, where are you going to go? What do you want to say today, Dad? And we go, oh, man, he did this, and he did this, and he did this. Jesus said, I can do nothing but that which I see the Father doing. So he was, like, staring at the Father. Like, what does that look like for you? It's like, oh, it's, do I want to go around the corner? Maybe I do want to go around the corner. But how about I say before I go around the corner, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? I'm sure the Holy Spirit doesn't want me to have a crab attitude. I'm sure the Holy Spirit doesn't want me to be a jerk face. I'm sure the Holy Ghost is not telling me to be a jerk. Amen. I'm pretty sure the Holy Spirit is not going to lead me into just being a total one of those. Right? You got your own words, you use them in your brain. Come on. And you go, well, my life looks so gnarly, but, you know, I, I called on the name of Jesus. I mean, I'm saved, but my life is all thrown apart. Well, let me tell you, when, at, the further you go away from yielding, a lot of that old crap is going to just show back up. I wish somebody would just say amen, because I'm preaching truth, truth of God tonight. Why are folks saved but miserable like they weren't saved? It's because they haven't followed his lead. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Well, I'm not doing that no more. Well, that's why you have such a terrible attitude. That's why your life's upside down, honest to God. It doesn't mean that if you follow God, you're never going to have issues because Jesus was led into the wilderness and he was tempted and there was some, still some junk going on, okay? But there was still peace. There was still glory. There was still love. If you find yourself void of these things, you should just wake up and we go, oh God, you forgot me. And he's like, dude, you never followed me in the first place. Oh, we pray. I prayed a prayer of salvation. Well, you know what? I'm super thankful to Jesus. But why not? Why would you ever divorce yourself from living in his presence? Jesus is like, here, feel me, touch me, see me. Okay, okay, oh yeah, we're confessing that you are the Lord. We're believing with our heart and confessing with our mouth that you are the Lord. Oh, glory to God. 
Jesus was raised from the dead by the Father. Amen, we believe it. Salvation. Thank you, God. That's awesome. And Jesus goes, but you need more. No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. He sure did. He said, now wait until you be endued with power from on high because the Holy Spirit's coming. Amen. It's the promise of the Father. It's the spirit of truth. It's the comforter. It's the helper. Some of you are living like you don't have a helper. Help yourself. Give up the reins. I know you've been making some decisions. And you can make some decisions. But man, you're only more blessed if you run them by God. Hey God, is this, is, um, Holy Spirit, is this an, an approved attitude? This is how I feel. Oh, you don't want to pray like that, do you? <laughs> right? <laughs> the big X sign. <laughs> okay, I guess we're going Well, I'm trying to be justified. You, the, the, <laughs> there wouldn't be a Christian counselor if you followed the mighty counselor. Amen. A lot of times we stop following his voice because we are afraid of what he's going to say. <laughs> so I'm like, Lord, I, I'm going to, like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm waiting for you. I'm, I'm going to wait for you, Lord. I'm going to wait for you. And he said, you gotta, he said, you got it kind of right, but you got it kind of wrong. I'm like, well, what are you talking about? He's like, he's, like, he's like, you can do nothing without me, John. Nothing. Nothing. I'm like, nothing? He's like, nothing. And I looked that up, and it means nothing. <laughs> nothing actually means nothing. And I'm like, okay, check, got that. But Lord, you know, I can lead people to worship. I can preach a word. He goes, nothing. Oh, Lord, this is the last thing you're going to, mm, okay. And so he's like, you remember today when you were on the bridge thing with Grayson and you were holding him? You guys, he, he, he's, he's like helpless. He's like, he's in the carrier and you take him out of the carrier and you put him in the stroller and you buckle him in and he's just rolling, you know, you drive him down the deal and his head's just, you know what I mean? He like chew on his finger or foot for a little bit and then, and then you get him in the thing and then like, you know, like we're all like, oh, let's go. And, and Cole and Lena, they're running upside down hills like the crazy Mohicans and, and like I pick Grayson up and, and I go to the end of the pier and I'm holding them, right? And then I'm like, I'm going to just sit him down. And if I sit him down, he just plumps down. And I'm like, Robin, grab his other hand, and we'll walk him. And like, he doesn't want to walk. His legs are just dragging. We're like, isn't this fun? He's like, yeah. And God's like, that's you. And that is good. It is good when you're like that. It's good when you're like, hey, I can't go nowhere unless I, get, I see him doing something. Come on. See, it's so opposite the world. And I don't mean just like negative the world. It's just an opposition to our system. Isn't it right? Because you grow up, you get older, and then you, you, know, you do it on your own. Well, newsflash, that's a success. That's a recipe for disaster. Now, you can do it on your own, but do you want a life that's approved? Do you want a life that's full of glory? Do you want a life that's going to look like Jesus' life? Because you're supposed to be following suit, right? You're supposed to model what he modeled, manifest what he manifests right? Move in the same power, same spirit, same power, same love, same glory, right? Yield yourself, and you will see a yield of fruit in your life. I'm convinced we're not yielded, and I am part of that. I'm talking about yielded to a whole other realm. You go, well, I listen to God, and I do too, sometimes. Can I get a witness? Now, how many want, I want to be yielded. Well, you know, if I don't preach like this and help you to know there's more, well, I just know this. I know there's nothing wrong with the Lord. And I know that Jesus was 100% man and 100% God. And I know this. The Scripture says that you and I, we're the temple of the Holy Ghost. So what does that look like? kind of looks like 100% man, 100% God. Hmm? Come on, somebody. Looks kind of like the same thing, don't, don't you think? And you go, well, yeah, yeah, sort of. Well, the Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, new creation. He's made something new. What does that new thing look like? It's 100% human, and it has 100% God. Clifford. 
Cliff. I call Clifford Clifford on the phone, not out loud, sorry. We don't have, jo we don't have Jesus Jr. Our life is not a Jesus Jr. life. And the Bible says all the fullness of the Godhead dwells bodily in Christ Jesus. That's awesome. He's the fullness of God. Amen. Amen to that. Now, let me show you why it's good, and we're wrapping it up, but let me show you why it's so good to yield the Holy Spirit. Jesus' success was that he saw what the Father was doing, and he did it. Right? Look at this in John 16. John chapter 16. And uh, we'll, we'll put it on the screen, and then we'll, we'll let you guys, we'll make our transitions. But John chapter 16, verse 12 through 15, David. John chapter 16, the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. 12 through 15. When, some, when it ever gets up there, somebody out there go like, hey! So, is it up there? Oh, hey, man, you're, bro you're breaking me down here. Hey, Amen. Oh, maybe it's like, ho, maybe I need a ho. Hey, hey, ho, hey, glory. 16, we got it about there, almost. John, six, John chapter 16, verse 12 through 15. Look at that. I still, this is Jesus saying, I still have many things to say to you, but you can't handle it. Turn to your neighbor and you say, you can't handle everything that God's got to say to you right now. Go ahead. You, can, you can't handle everything that God's got to say to you right now. You, you, you can't handle it. You just can't handle it. Turn to somebody else and say, you just can't handle everything that God has to say to you. You just can't handle everything. You can't handle it, honey. You can't handle all of it right now. You just can't. Hey, isn't that good? That's good. That means there's some great stuff, but you don't get it yet because you couldn't handle it. Amen? One day you're going to get to handle it, right? But not right now okay N next verse however when he spirit of truth same thing as the holy spirit spirit of truth has come what is he going to do well that means he's going to be in front of your keister he's going to lead your bad rear end he's going to lead you he's going to bring you along guide you into what the same stuff you can't handle right now holy spirit's going to lead you into but he's going to do it in time because you can't handle the truth. You can't handle all the truth about your life right now. You just couldn't. If he gave you everything about your life right now, your brain would just short circuit. For he will not speak. Uh-oh. Now, Jesus only did what he saw as. Now, look at this pattern with the Holy Spirit. But he will not speak of his. But whatever. He will, and He will, what? Things to come. Amen. Why should you listen to the Holy Spirit? Because He's hearing stuff all the time. Gee, He's hearing stuff all the time. He hears stuff about the future. We had a, a couple in here, and the Lord's like, tell them they're going to be missionaries. Okay. You're going to be a missionary. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> he will tell you things to come. There was somebody in this church, he just walked in the back, but he told us that Rob and I were going to have our third child when we couldn't have a, a baby for six years. We weren't able to have a baby. And then God, the Holy Spirit told somebody, says, you tell them they're going to have a child. And then they told us, and we're like, wow. Because it was on a higher authority. Amen? So what I'm giving to you tonight, and I said we're going to jump into this, and I said it prophetically. I didn't realize all the stuff we're going to get into. But there's a lot more for us to get into. We won't get into it tonight. But there's a lot more equipping where this came from. Because God wants me like Grayson. He wants me to rely on him. He wants me to put my little, my little tiny hand in his hand. And that's success. G 
against the enemy? Stand against the wiles of the devil. Against the world? Stand against the corruption that's in the world. Right? In, in your job, stand for what's right. When it comes to God, follow Him. L- follow Him. Lead me. Lead me. Lead me. Lead me, God. Lead me, God. And if we will get the, the spirit of the yielded and the spirit that Jesus has in that the way He yielded Himself, the power increases as your, you decrease. Control. When you diminish control, you gain power. You ever wonder, like, how does somebody know something in the Spirit? Because they yielded to it. Well, I've never done that before. Because you've never yielded to it. He has no respect for persons. He won't give me a gift, and he'll just refuse to give it to you because he doesn't like your hair. No. I am yielded. There was a church in the New Testament. They, all, they were getting drunk and all kind of other stuff bad was happening. But guess what? They had all kind of gifts of the Spirit rolling around that place. That doesn't mean, well, we get drunk and God's going to move. That's not what it means. It means that if any group of people yield to the Holy Spirit, He's going to do stuff. He's just looking for some people that are willing to give it up. What? Control. Amen. Amen to that. Amen to that. I love you guys, but just get ready to get your face challenged. I'm going to challenge you to the face. Time to become like a child, right? The child enters the kingdom. The adult doesn't enter the kingdom. The child enters the kingdom. Like a child, those are the ones that enter the kingdom. It's time to make some some forts. Some sheet forts. It's time to do some kid stuff. Amen. Amen. The more you yield, the more power you wield. Is that all right? And you know how I got to where I hear? Was this good for you tonight? You know how this was, was this good for you tonight? Why was this good for you tonight? Because I started and said, I got a thing, but I could care less about the thing I've got. Prepared. I want what you want to say, Holy Spirit. And he started by saying, well, you have a spirit of heaviness just to start with, FYI. What? Yeah, you have a spirit of heaviness. So if you ever want to get to where I'm trying to get you to, you've got to get rid of that first. Oh, okay, Holy Spirit. So if some of you came in at a certain time, I was doing this up here. <laughs> what are you doing? It's what he told me to do. And so I started doing it. And man, if, I'll be John Brown if that thing didn't get off of me. Wow, that happened. That really just happened. I just got lifted. Whoa. And man, I was like, praise the Lord. Well, what else? I started praying in the Spirit. I started saying, Dad, 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 Daddy. And I'm over here crying out, Daddy, 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 Dad, Dad, Daddy. And you go like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just getting, I'm just just following. Amen. If you're tired of what, if you have words that you put out there and there's no power with them, it's not God. Looks like there's some more yielding to do. I'm going to stop meddling. There's something going on in here. We're on to something, Jack. I love you. Amen. 2016 will be a year we learn how to yield and a year we learn how to wield. Well, I prayed for somebody and this thing didn't happen. Did you see the Father doing that? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I can't wait for this one. This is going to get good. Oh, my God. All right. Um, I love you so much. I do. I love you so much. I bless your hearts. Uh, I, Josh, I think I'm supposed to be with you guys Thursday night. I don't know what you guys got going on, but I think I'm supposed to be with you Thursday night. I think I also heard that, Lori, we're supposed to crank back up the foundry thing. Maybe not every week, but I <laughs> Yeah, workout thing here, and I talked to a couple people, and they, you know, we're going to take care of you, take care of your time, and if you want to, not, if you want a, an amazing, 
An amazing, an amazing workout. An amazing workout. Go no further. Faith Fitness with Lori. I love dancing. I dance. I dance like no one's watching. Can we do both? All right, sweet. So uh, anyway, there's that's something that's good coming up, and we've got. Oh boy, there's so much good stuff coming up, but we're kind of coming to an end. So I'm not just gonna. I'm just gonna let you go tonight. Uh, so I'll, I'll give you a calendar for March, and then you'll know what's going on, and it'll be amazing. What? Oh, you're so smart. Both of you are so smart. Oh, that's smart, too. You got to do it. You got to do it to me. So next, <laughs> ne- thank you, God. Next weekend is, uh, fifth, or is, is the last Sunday of the month. And so for the last Sunday of the month, we have a Sunday morning gathering, morning glory as opposed to Saturday night. If you come that Saturday night, you're going to, you, you, you weren't led by the Spirit because he would have said, they ain't doing it, Jack. So be led by the Spirit because he won't let you get there. He'll be like, no, don't go. Uh, and so it's not Saturday night. Next weekend is Sunday morning. We'll uh, be doing some teaching and we're going to be taking communion and it's going to be amazing and I love it every time we do it. So next Saturday is free. Next Sunday, let's be here together at 10 a.m. Landmark Open is a golf uh, tournament that we're going to do in March, and it is, it is awesome. It is going to be awesome. If you've ever played golf or you've never played golf, you're welcome to have fun. And it is not going to be hardcore. It's going to be a blast. And, and it is so much fun. Oh, you're so brilliant. Show, show everyone your sign-up sheet. It's so good. It looks like a little golf thing. It's awesome. I love it. I really love it. And Jamie and, and, uh, and Kyle, I thank you guys for, for, doing, for, for putting it together and for making that sweet thing. You have pasting skills. Like, I had no idea. Like, seriously, you, you, your construction is off the charts. So, so I, you go, I've never played golf. Come out, man. It is so much fun. Last time we had it, it was full of people that didn't play golf. So that's a great question. Um, so, I, what? Did, what? Hold on, hold on. I, I think that's too close. 13th. 13th. Yeah, that's, and it's a Sunday. Easy. Sunday. We'll get up in the morning, eat something, go play some golf. It'll be a blast. Sunday, the 13th. I think we'll have a better um, showing. Yeah, and and they let goats eat on the, their uh, their greens, so you know we can't hurt them. Um, so the thirteenth. Okay, thank you for that. So that's that. We need to push that and get sign up sheet in the back, and that's it. Amen.